And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Back in 2008, Z-Man Games produced a game called Pandemic. It was a cooperative game, not the first one ever made, but the one that really paved the way for cooperative games to be as popular as they are today, and is one of the best ones available. And then they re-released it in 2013, early this year, in this great new production value box and components. Then a year later, in 2009, they released an expansion for that called On the Brink. And then also earlier this year, 2013, they re-released it with the new art to sort of make it look and really new and, and hip. Now, in late 2013, I'd say just right around Gen Con 2013, Z-Man Games came out with the next expansion, in the lab and look how beautiful this board in game is we've got to talk about this today we're gonna to have a chance to crack it open where we're gonna be spending most of our time in the lab sequencing diseases characterizing them testing cures putting things in centrifuge dishes and growth dishes and separator dishes we're gonna be in the lab having lots of fun checking out this new way to play is it worth it does it change it enough is this an expansion you need to have let's answer those questions and check it out I first want to point out that I've gotten everything from the base game and both expansions to fit in this one box. Now let's check it out here. I have all three manuals for the, the, the two expansions in the base game. I've got the original board, the base game board. I've got the in the lab board. And then in here, I have all of my different cards that fit actually exactly perfect. We have all the new vials that we'll show you a little bit later. We have all the research stations, the new research stations. We have every single one of the pawns from all three uh, boxes. We have the last pawn here. We have your disease petries here, and then underneath these disease petries fit the last of the components, and everything is able to fit perfectly in one box. Granted, the lid pops up maybe a quarter of an inch, but everything does fit. Now check out these coolest components that come in this expansion. Really cool pieces of the vials of there's one of each color that gets used during the game that we'll show you a little bit later. But here's a sneak peek at how cool these vials are. I'm going to jump right to the lab challenge, which is what you're probably most excited about. Now the board set up here, we have the Petri disc covers here um, and all the spots. We start with what's called the sequence card. And how this works is when you remove a disease cube from the board, uh, instead of moving to the supply, you can move it into some of these uh, Petri dishes. So let's say maybe we, uh, we do this. Maybe there's one in here like this. Maybe over time there's some like this or what have you. Now, again, now that these cubes are here, anytime you manipulate in the lab, you have to be, that person has to be in a research station. So let's assume that for all the actions I do on this board, somebody is in a research station. Now, so here we see this Petri dish and we see some arrows. This dish can go this way or this way. Same for this dish can go this way and this way. Now, if this dish goes, if we, the, the cubes in this dish go this way, we see here that they're all the same colored cubes. And what this means is that you can take as many as you want of the same color and move them to this dish. The rest of them go back to the supply. If I go this way, you could take one of each color. So in this case, if I wanted to go that way, I could take one of each color and move it here, but the second of black goes back. So that's how these two different sort of uh, sequence lines, as they call it, or research lines work. So let's say for a lab action, I moved all my blacks here. And in this case, the rest of these would, would go away, but go back to the supply. Um, so that's moving, moving it here. Now this dish up here is called the centrifuge dish or line. And this one down here is called the separator. And this last one is called the growth. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So once we've got here for, again, for an action, we can place a card here under the microscope to characterize a disease. And this card has to be one of the colors of the possible disease cures for this card. In this case, it has to be black or yellow. Once we put a card here, we are solving and trying to cure the black disease. And we put one of those cool vials on there to show that we are trying to cure the black disease. Now, when you do that, these gray spots, which were kind of wild cards before we characterized it, are now have to be black. 
So we need one, two, three, four, five black cubes and one yellow one in order to be able to test and be able to get this cure out. So now that we need so many of these, for an action, again, you can either move this to this uh, to, to the sequence card and start building the cure, or you can move it to the growth dish. And notice it says X2. So anytime we move cubes to a growth dish, it doubles, and you're taking these from the supply. Now, towards the end of the game, this can get risky because if at any time during these lab actions, you run out of cubes from the supply, the game ends just like normal. So once these cubes have been doubled, now you see you can actually go to either direction here. So we've doubled them, and now we can boom, one, two, three, four, and we've got that. So now we've got this done. Now let's look at this other line here. Maybe we add uh, a black cube here, and we take one of each during another action, and we move these over to here. And for uh, another action, let's say we could now move these to the growth dish, and maybe these double like this. And now we can move this off into the line here. So maybe we can go here and here, and this would now sort of complete this, and the rest of these that aren't used get moved back to the supply. Now at any time, as soon as we have at least one cube on the sequence card, we can uh, test, the, test the cure. And how we do that is we put, again, we're solving for black, a black card, again, all these are actions from a research center. Put a black card there for an action. This now uh, tests the cure, as long as we have one cube on this. And what you can do here is once you test that, you take one cube from any city that's black and you can remove it and put it back to the supply. Now we've gotten this far. The last stage is to actually cure the disease, which is taking three cards. One person has to take three cards, um, and just like normal from a research station, and play those three cards right there. And then this black disease is now finally cured. Once it's cured, uh, essentially it gets cured off. This goes to the regular board showing you're cured. These go back to the supply and a new sequence card comes out. Now, there is a second line here. As soon as you have a second research station built and you're at a, uh, um, a lab, a, a research station, for an action, you can actually bring out another uh, sequence card. Now, again, if you're at a research station and you don't like these, these sequence cards, you can always pull another one and either swap it with one of the other ones or discard it if you don't like it for an action. So if I didn't like this and I was maybe blue was already cured and this was here, I could discard this and put this here for an action. And there's all sorts of different ones that have, you know, many of them have two uh, different ones to cure. Some of them have many, like this one has all five you can pretty much pick, you know, two, this, and there's, there's at least, there's one of every color that's just its own color where there's four. So there's just a lot of different sequence cards that you can see here, like that. A couple last thing to notes about the lab is that once a uh, cubes are in either of these two dishes here, um, they can be moved to either one of these sequence lines, but not both. So these two cubes would have to move here. You can't do one and one, and then these two cubes could move here. Actually, this is the only one that can move here now because this is red. But they can go to either, either sequence research line, but they have to go to both. You can't split them up. The other note is that when you uh, build a research state center at any place on the board, you get one bonus free lab action when you do that. Because I spent so much time in the detail of the In the Lab section, which is probably what you're most interested in, in the interest of time, I'm going to go through the rest of the expansion at a very high level. So the four new roles are the virologist, the field director, the pilot, and the local liaison. You can tell they're new cards because they have the little beaker in the lab section on them. Also, two cards, researcher and epidemiologist, they were earlier roles that were in the base game in the expansion, and now they have a new lab challenge added to them. So if you're playing the lab challenge, you replace those older cards with these new cards. If you want to see the details of these, just pause this video in HD and you can read them. Here are the two new virulent strain cards and the three new event cards, sequence and breakthrough, infection zone ban, and improved sanitation. You can tell they're from the in the lab by the local. And if you want to see more details of this, just pause the HD video and go ahead and read it. When playing the solo game, you get one random uh, roll, just like usual, and you don't get a second roll. The second roll is a CDC. After you finish your turn normally, which is you do your actions, you take the player deck cards and you do the infection deck cards, 
The CDC gets one action, and this is only in the solo game. They can move you like any normal local move. They can reassign your role if you're at a research station. You can change roles. Uh, you can exchange data if you're at a research station. They can swap cards with you, assuming the card's the same color as the city you're in. You can draw a card for the CDC. They can discover a cure if they have enough cards. And if you're playing the In the Lab challenge, they can do one lab action. The Mutation Worldwide Panic adds 12 new purple cubes, which essentially doubles the amount of cubes in the game that are purple. And at the beginning of the game, when you set up a game like normal and you're spreading the original diseases, uh, there are six total purple cubes put out in a very specific manner. You could probably guess uh, by looking at this how they're done. And also, the two Mutation Worldwide Panic cards get put in the Infection discard pile instead of the ones from the On the Brink. And instead of drawing one purple cube when these come up, you draw two purple cubes. So essentially, there's twice as many cubes coming out and you start with cubes on the board. In the team game, there's either two or three teams. Each team is two players, so you have four or six total people. They get to choose a research station uh, type, and they put their pawns out. They get three rolls, and they get to choose two of them. They each get a secret goal, where these goals, at the end of the game, if they have won the game and that between the, the teams have cured all the diseases before they die, they get to flip over their goals and see the points. So they get different points for curing certain diseases and uh, eradicating diseases and some other things like having certain amount of cards in the player deck or having certain amount of spaces left in the outbreak meter. These are their secret goals. Uh, on a turn, the, the team members sit next to each other and between the two of them, they get six total actions, either three and three or split four and two, either way. And uh, they also have these bonus cards that are mixed into the player deck, which help them during the game. You get one of these per epidemic card mixed in, and they help them during the game. If they don't use them, they get points for them as well. And they get certain points for having the first cure or the first eradication. And anytime they cure or eradicate a disease of a color, they get these tokens to help them. And then at the end of the game, assuming that they have won collectively, they flip over their gold cards, add up their points. The team with the most points is the winner. All right, well, there's in the lab. Wow, there's a lot of stuff there, right? At first you probably just thought, hey, it's just in the lab one different way to play. But no, there's three different ways to play. There's new roll cards, there's new event cards, there's new violent strain cards. You can play solo, you can play team, you can play in the lab. There's a lot here. This gives you an almost unlimited amount of ways to play this game now between the mutations or not, the violent strains or not, solo or not, team or not. It's just, it's crazy, I love it. Now, the in the lab portion is probably the one you're most interested in. I really loved this. You know, I do, I always loved Pandemic, but there was always that thing of, hey, collecting five cards and turning them in. It, it's cool and that's, the mechanic worked, but it wasn't very thematic. This in the lab thing, I mean, it really feels like you're trying to work together as a team to find a cure for a disease. You got the Petri dishes out. You're trying to decide which research line to go on. You're trying to figure out which disease should we be characterizing. Thematically, it just makes so much more sense. Granted, it does make the game a lot more complex, and it does take a little while to get used to the different rules. But once that's understood, I probably will never play the normal way again, unless I'm playing with new players that haven't played before. The thing I loved about this is it really totally changes the way that the game is played. You know, at the beginning, it seems so hard and so difficult because you're so trained to have your brain think of different ways of getting your cards, sharing knowledges with people, who's gonna get the five cards for this cure, and you're no longer thinking that way. So at the beginning, the game is gonna feel very hard and very difficult just because it's so different and you have to train your brain to think differently. However, when you're playing with this, I love how it's a puzzle. It's really puzzly. You're trying to figure out, okay, well, when I treat diseases, which, which dish am I gonna put them in? Because depending on the first dish I put them in is gonna decide you know, which way it goes, through the separator dish or the centrifuge dish. So at first it may feel a bit hard, but after multiple plays, it, I wouldn't say if you play just in the lab without any of the violent strains or the mutation or anything like that, just the, the normal in the lab with four epidemic cards, um, after you've learned it and you've sort of figured out how it works, I wouldn't say it's any harder than the normal one. At first it will feel it, but after a while I'd say it's not, then you can start ratcheting it up. It's just a different challenge. I love how much different it adds to it. Um, it's more thematic, it's just, it's awesome. Now, if that was just the only thing that came in the expansion, done deal. What about it? If you're a fan of, of, of Pandemic, which you probably are, you're watching this, it's a no-brainer. You get it. But in addition to that, the new roles are cool. The new events, hey, I always like new events. Now, the new mutation challenge, the, the worldwide panic, I don't know about you, I might not be an expert player, but I had a hard enough time beating it with the regular mutation virus that doubling the amount of cubes, sending some out at the start time, and having two of them come up every time one of those mutation cards come up, 
Oof, for me that's overkill, but I bet you there are some people out there that maybe are experts at the game that are waiting for that. One thing is it does is it absolutely positively says that no one should ever be able to say this game's too easy, no matter who you are. Now while playing the solo game, I had played it solo the normal way, meaning I played two different roles before this, and it was fine. I, I always found it to be okay, but a lot of times I would get confused where I'd be playing and I'd be thinking so hard on what to do on my next turn or maybe even thinking turns ahead that then I would forget whose turn it was, whose turn it is, what step am I at, did I take the player cards yet, did I do the... And it would just be confusing and I would lose my place a lot. With the solo, this new solo version, even though you're limited quite a bit because you're only moving one roll, it simplifies it enough so that you don't get lost like that. So I did like that. And it did give you that CDC, which allows you to kind of do those things where you're moving yourself or doing a lab action. And yeah, it's not as, as flexible and as interesting to, to, to make two different roles special abilities together. It's simplified and streamlined it so I don't forget where I am, which made it for me a more enjoyable solo experience. Now the team game. Now I am a person who loves just the pure co-op. I love everyone working together or everyone not working together. The semi-co-ops I don't like as much. So for the team game, even though it was interesting for me, it's probably not something I would play all the time, but I could see where a lot of people would like to play the team game because it is kind of cool how you get your secret goal. In any game you have secret missions and other teams don't as cool, and it's mixing the co-op, and you're pulling those, those, those uh, you know, putting your research stations out that nobody else can use. So the team version was interesting, uh, but for me, it's probably just not for me, it might be for you. So overall, amazing expansion there's way more in here than i had expected and again even if it was just the in the lab portion boom done deal but to add all these extra ways to play um it's a slam dunk and i don't even know what else they could do to top this or to even make this game even better i think it's done but who knows we'll see great job z-man you gotta check out in the lab so much for watching the dice tower videos find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com you can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Mm -hmm.